Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. I recently got an M1 iPad Pro in the 11 inch version and in this video I'm going to be showing you the accessories that I have for it as well as the apps that I use for productivity and for content creation. I hope you enjoy and let's get into it. I got the 11 inch iPad Pro instead of the 12.9 inch mainly because I prefer the smaller size and I think I would have gotten the 11 inch even if the 12.9 was cheaper because I have smaller hands and I feel like a larger iPad might feel a bit awkward for me, but that's just personal taste. I got the second generation Apple Pencil to go with the iPad since I'll be writing and drawing a lot, so getting the best quality pencil was worth it to me. I upgraded from an iPad 2019 with a first generation Apple Pencil, so this new combo feels like luxury to me. As for the case and the keyboard, I got the Logitech Combo Touch. I decided to get this one over the Apple Magic Keyboard because not only is the Apple one more expensive, but it's a lot less protective and I think slightly less comfortable to use. The Magic Keyboard's sleek look is pretty irresistible, but when I saw what the Combo Touch could do, I knew that this one was the right choice for me. I tend to drop things a lot, so this one with its rubber casing is much safer. The larger trackpad and ability to fold the stand all the way back makes it a lot more comfortable to use. The typing is super pleasant on the combo touch as well. The dongle that I use is the Dotocool USB-C hub that I used to use with my MacBook Pro. One thing to watch out for is that some dongles will likely not fit with the Combo Touch since it cuts really close to the opening. I really like how everything is magnetic and the backlit keyboard is a super nice touch as well. Alright, so when I first open up my iPad, this is what it looks like. I basically have no apps up here and everything is down on the dock area over here. I like it this way because it's a lot cleaner and this is the only screen that I have. For my most used apps, I have widgets for them. So I've got my Spotify here and I kind of like the little mini Spotify thing because you can just click on it and it brings you to the playlist you're listening to last. And then I have my batteries here as well as a Notion widget. And I really like this Notion widget because on my Notion, I have basically two hubs. And the first one is my main hub. So it's got all my pages like for work, for YouTube, writing, learning, journal, and stuff like that. So this is like my main area for Notion. But then I also make use of another hub, which is for my school stuff. So that's U of T. And I basically have all the pages for the courses I've taken and the courses that I'm taking. And I really like this widget because it has quick access to the two. And then I also have my Google Calendar here, which is pretty nice because it shows you, you know, the calendar and then what's coming up tomorrow. And yeah, my schedule is pretty clear right now. Next is the doc and I have three folders. The first one is for everything productivity and school related. The second one is for creative stuff and then the third one is for entertainment and the four apps that i have over here are my most used i use these multiple times every single day which is why they get their special little place on the dock here and i made all these app covers on procreate and i think they're pretty clean they turned out the way that i wanted them to because i just wanted an app background to match this notion widget here with like a plain white symbol and I couldn't really find anything that was online that was free so I just decided to make my own. So the first one is obviously Safari because I use this every single day. 
I don't know who doesn't. And then the second one is Apple Books because I use my iPad a lot to read and it's just something that I use every single day. So it's easily accessible right there. And then the third one is Procreate because I use it a lot to edit my photos and to draw and stuff like that. So that's that. Finally, the fourth one is GoodNotes. And GoodNotes is a very important app to me because I use it for my journaling, for my school notes, as well as planning. Here I have my morning pages, which I write every single morning. And then I also have notes for stuff that I'm going to be learning, and then my planner. This is kind of like a bullet journal, but kind of in my own way. And yeah, right now I'm on summer vacation, so I don't have any school notes to take. But if I were taking classes, I would have my school notes here. So the first folder over here is everything school and productivity related. So I've got my Gmail, Outlook, and Google Calendar, and Notion over here. I also have my OneDrive here, and OneDrive is also super important to me because I can share basically all of my stuff between my PC and my iPad through this. And if I didn't have this, it wouldn't really have that cross-platform compatibility. So this is super important. I've got all my school stuff and my work stuff stored in here. And then the next app is Readwise. Readwise is a really cool app that lets you compile all of your highlights from any book. And this app is actually a lot more compatible with Kindle than with Apple Books. But since Apple Books is my main, I figured out a way to import my Apple Book highlights into Readwise. And really quickly, for those of you who want to know, if you're reading in Apple Books and you made a bunch of highlights, you can go into this setting over here. And then you go into notes and you see all your highlights there. And what you do is you click share and then edit notes. You select all of them and then share. And you basically are just sending this email to add at readwise.io. And then once you send that, it will automatically appear in your Readwise account. And yeah, so you can review all your highlights. And I think it's really good because you know how we tend to forget a lot of the things that we read? Well, this app basically just lets you see all your highlights in one place. And I find that very helpful. The coolest part about this app is that you can actually import all of your highlights into Notion. So you can use Notion as kind of a database and keep all your highlights in the cloud like that. The next app we have is my student canvas thing. So I can access all my coursework and course material and then my calendar to do. I don't really use these, but I just use this to download files and to watch lectures. The next one is Word. Using Word on this iPad has been pretty nice, actually. It's pretty similar to desktop, I would say. So if I go into this document here, which is for work, I can just edit it. Normally, I would have my keyboard attached. And it basically feels the same as desktop, which is pretty nice. And since my school email is with Outlook, I basically have everything synced through that email. And so I can access everything from both my PC and my iPad. The next thing that I have on here is Notability, and the only reason why I have this is because my dad paid for it a long time ago, so I didn't have to pay for it and I tried it. But I do prefer GoodNotes a lot over Notability, so I don't really use it that much. But it is a good note-taking app. And then I have my good notes, like I mentioned before, and then Notes. The reason why I use Apple Notes as well as Good Notes is because for me, Apple Notes is kind of like a quick note-taking thing, while GoodNotes feels more like a notebook. While GoodNotes is kind of like a replacement of real paper, to me at least, Notes is kind of like the digital notes that I would normally take. So for example, if I were listening to a podcast and I want to take notes, I just really quickly jot this down. And later, if I want to go over it, I can go over it really quickly. And if I want to really solidify this knowledge that I have, I would probably make real notes in GoodNotes. That might seem a little excessive, but it's just how I've used Apple Notes since I got my first iPhone. And so, yeah. A cool part about this iPad is that if I turn my iPad off and then I basically just tap the screen like this with my Apple Pen, I can immediately make a note 
and this is just really good and i really like this feature because say i'm listening to a podcast like i said i can just tap and i'll have notes ready because i don't want to pause my podcast and then you know bring up the app and then write down notes next in this folder i have slack and that's basically just for communication with my jobs and the teams that i'm in and then after that i have powerpoint and PowerPoint is the main thing that I use to take lecture notes when I'm on desktop. If I have all the notes available here, I can basically just bring good notes in and I can just write notes about this and I don't need to download anything separately because it's just available on the cloud. Next, I have Microsoft Teams and I really hate this app, but I have to use it for work meetings. So I have that. And then I also have Zoom in case I want to do a meeting outside or somewhere that's not at my desk and I think zoom works pretty well on this iPad so pretty happy with that and finally I have HP smart and I love this app because you can basically just take any document and send it right away to your printer on your local network and you can also use it to scan stuff from your printer and then bring it into your iPad and I've used this a lot for verification stuff for example if I needed a scan of my passport I can just pop it in the printer and then scan it'll automatically import the document into my iPad I could also use the camera to scan a piece of paper and then make it into a digital document I don't really have that many papers, but it certainly beats having to go to a printer, putting the paper into a scanner, and then pressing the buttons, and then waiting for the scanner, etc. So, technology is great. The next folder that I have is for creativity related stuff. So obviously I have Procreate and I use this to edit my photos, make my YouTube thumbnails, to make graphics for work or something like that, as well as to just draw for fun. And I would say Procreate is like the best $12 that I've ever spent on an app. So highly recommend if you don't already have it and you have an iPad, you should probably get it because it makes your iPad a million times more worth it. Next, I have Vectornator. And I saw a lot of people saying on YouTube that Vectornator is one of the best free apps for graphic design on the iPad, so I got it. I'm not really that used to it because I've never made vector graphics before, but I'm in the process of learning it and hopefully I'll be able to use this tool soon. The next app I have is InShot and I use this app on my phone to edit my vlog sometimes, but I also have it on my iPad in case I want a bigger screen to edit on. So here I just have random video and it's super easy to edit on this. It's very intuitive. If you ever need a very quick video editing app, InShot is the one to go with. It's also free and although there are in-app purchases, for basic edits you don't really need to buy anything. Next I have Mojo, which is a quick video editing app mostly geared towards social media like Instagram or TikTok. And it's pretty cool except for most of the features you need to pay. And so I didn't pay for it because I don't think I really need it that much, but I like going in here not to edit videos, but to get inspiration on like the motion graphics or other edits I could practice on DaVinci Resolve, which is my main video editing software on PC. They have some pretty creative stuff. I just come here for inspiration. Next, I have Clips and I used to neglect this app a lot, but with the new LiDAR scanner, it makes augmented reality really, really easy. I was pretty blown away by this because it looks real. I don't really know what I'm going to use it for, maybe future videos, but I'm not really sure. It's just kind of fun to play with. Next, I have my photos and then photo booth and then GarageBand, which I just use to mess around in. And then voice memos, which I use to make voice notes or record sounds that I want to remember. And then Spotify and then my guitar tabs app and this app is also quite annoying if you don't pay for the full version but it's definitely better than using the guitar tabs in safari and then finally i have apple music and if you slide to the next page here i have all the apps that i don't really need to access easily so i'm just gonna skip that my third and final folder has all my entertainment and social media i've got netflix obviously which i use to watch stuff when I'm bored. I don't really watch TV that much, but I like watching movies. So I've got that here. And then I have YouTube, obviously, and Pinterest. And Pinterest is overall just a great app for 
inspiration or for when you're designing graphics or when you need to find any pictures of anything. So that's a must have. And then I have YouTube Studio just because I do have a YouTube channel and I like tracking my stuff. I've got FaceTime, Messages, as well as Discord and Discord, I made a separate account just for this iPad because I want to send myself the thumbnails that I edited or any other photo that I want to share because it's just a lot easier than putting it into a cloud and then waiting for it to download and stuff like that. And also, I'm waiting for the day when they make the screen share ability compatible on this iPad because it'd be cool to stream like drawing and stuff. Then I've got App Store. And I also have chess because playing chess on the iPad is actually really nice. Next to that, I have books and then my two learning apps, so Coursera and Udemy. So Coursera is a really great app. You can basically learn anything and I really appreciate this app because I feel like I've learned a lot from it. And clearly my biggest issue is finishing the courses that I begin, but it's been a good time. Similarly, Udemy also has a bunch of courses that you could take. Some of these are paid for, but they do have a couple of free ones that are very useful. That brings us to the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if it helped you out, make sure to leave a like and a comment, and I'll see you in the next one.